We well, are now live. Earl? Hi, Danielle Savory. We made it. Sorry for the delay. Uh, <laughs> I forgot that I live in LA and that I don't have a flying car. So <laughs> we're a little behind. I'm sorry. We Mama, made it. That I we had made you it. Waiting. But you know I'm old as hell, so it's past my bedtime I know. already. So I was, I was trying to get here even earlier. <laughs> um, and like a couple of people were like, damn, Danielle, we've been trying to make um, the lives later because it's like. 5 a.m. It's now probably like 4 a.m. I think like something like that overseas. So some people are wanting later. So we'll have to give them a late one one of these times. We've got two more. Oh, okay. But this is the early one. But you guys will share them. It'll be out there. Um, the dogs are here. They're licking my hands. Um, anyways, Merle. Yeah, hey. Everyone, this is Merle Dandridge. Everyone, I don't know if you know who she is. It's Danielle Savory. <laughs> she plays my bishop on station actor. I don't know if you know her. We have matching shirts we had them made just for this. <laughs> <laughs> this has been the attire for all of them. I switched up the beanie, though. The beanie's just red today. Oh, well, then let me have one then. Oh, yeah, you want this one? If that's, yeah. if that's the costume. If you like beanies. Not everyone. Du jour. Ste Stefania said she did not want to wear a beanie because beanies don't look good on her, but Emily did. So it's totally your call. I don't know. What do you think? I think, I mean, you look gorgeous in anything. So, it's true. It's true. Okay. Um, okay, so we are going to watch episode 513, Cold Blue Steel and Sweet Fire, written by Alex Fernandez. Which is her first episode of network television. Ever. Can you believe? Like, and we got some such delicious words to say. We did. I and mean, you specifically did with the flashbacks. So many words. And honestly, <laughs> thank God for Sabre because... You know, we often share a dressing room on the stages and she will like, she'll be like, you want to run it again? I'm like, heck yeah, I want to run it again. <laughs> yes, let's run it, run it, run it. So it's, I, I feel like I get my, my favorite like theater school pal who wants to, you know, let's dig in and let's keep practicing, you know, even more off screen. And we really wanted to get that our scene right because we love Paris. We love yeah. Paris Barclay who directed this episode so much. Hi Paris. Um, hey Paris, how you doing? <laughs> who... Consequently, um, gave me my, when I moved to LA, my first big job in Los Angeles. Which was? Sons of Anarchy. And that was That's so awesome. 10 years before this. And it was interesting because I was supposed to carry on longer on that show, but I got this really big profile pilot. And so they had to, spoiler alert, kill me off the program. And because of this pilot that I was in. Yeah. And it turns out that the pilot cut me as well. So then I didn't have any job. And then that same, that same Welcome time, to being the life of an actor. That is, that is, you got to roll with the punches. I'm telling you, you can't take anything personally. But then that was, um, that all made way. Um, you know, thankfully Paris gave me a, a vote of confidence when I came to town. and was like a, a great champion. And it made way for a video game that I did 10 years ago, which is now a game, which is now a show that I got to reprise my role on, on uh, HBO. Friends. Called? The Last of Us. For anyone that hasn't seen it yet, you must see it. It is absolutely phenomenal. And Merle, you are absolutely fantastic in it. Thank I you, my friend. I can't wait to see what else they do with your character. And I'm show. really, really, really excited to be directed by you. Oh! I have to say. You, you caught know? me off guard with that word. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. No, because you're so, like, specific and rigorous and thoughtful and, and, I mean, obviously you guys love her performances and it's not, it's not just because she's talented, it's because she puts in the W-R-O, W, <laughs> W-R-K, I got it, I got it. <laughs> uh. I, that was so good, though. <laughs> I liked it. She puts in the W-R-K, okay? <laughs> um... So yeah, that's, that's, uh, so it's very exciting because I know whatever, you know, she puts her hand to, she's going to work hard at and, she, and she's going to make sure that we all feel held. So thank you for look, saying that. I'm looking forward I to it. I did not pay her to say that. Although I wanted to say the joke, she but paid I paid me you a little. <laughs> <laughs> she paid me in, in, uh, in what, in water and free water. Yeah. <laughs> Um, thank you very much for saying that. Oh, I'm looking it's forward to it. It's an absolute pleasure to get to work with you. I'm sad that we're not getting to work with each other as much. That was, we got to work with you a lot with each other in season five. Yeah, which was really, really fun. I yeah. gotta say, I had a great Same. time with you. Same. So, we get to um, play a lot. Yeah. So hopefully we get to like face off again. And, and, and yeah. honestly, um, well, I don't know. We can get into it because we've got, we have a lot to watch. But, yeah. But, you but watch yeah, let's watch the program. Okay. So here it goes. Everybody, just a reminder. It's 
three, two, play. And on play, we're all gonna try to hit play at the same time and it's gonna sync up. Maddie's got the TV, I've got the computer. Hold on one second. We'll make sure everybody is I feel like I'm Haska. watching an <laughs> episode of, of what's her name, uh, Dora the Explorer. Swiper, stop swiping. And then we all do it at the same time. Oh, no. I, don't know. I never you saw were Dora just, the Explorer. You were just giving me instructions, and suddenly I was, like, watching Electric Company or, <laughs> or like, Sesame Street where there's, like, an and interactive. And to play. <laughs> Everybody say, hi, Elmo. Like, what? <laughs> well, you know what? I have a career in something that this doesn't work out. <laughs> Um, so okay. like my five-year-old engaged with the way you were giving instructions. I feel like I probably do that to a lot of people. Five-year-old <laughs> engage. Because I am a five-year-old at heart. Samesies. Yeah. Same. Same. It's probably why we like each other so much. Yeah, true that. Um, okay. Everybody? Oh, we're going to get this right this time. Yeah, we are. Okay. On play. It's three, two, you hit play. Ready? <laughs> Stop making me laugh. <laughs> three, two, play. What? <laughs> isn't us this time. Hold on, ready? It's working. Just, you're good. Leave it alone. It's good. It's a little off. <clears throat> it's okay. Are you going to watch this one or this one? I'm watching this one. Okay. Okay. Funny. This is funny because Thank I just, I literally just noticed that you were running with a medicine ball. <laughs> on that a treadmill so, in my house. That is so gangster. It's so Maya. My toe was broken in this <gasps> while I was no. running. Yes. And also, this is Almost a little over a year ago. Wow, time um, goes by so fast. I was standing in the corner of the scene when he was shooting this. Did like, you pretending like dialogue? Pretending like he was pumping some heavy iron. Question. <laughs> and, I, and I definitely hazed him. I was like, oh, is that all you got? Because those were the fake weights, I'm assuming. I'm not, I'm not You're gonna, not gonna call them out? I'll explain to you guys. We have actual fake weights, so sometimes it looks like we have real weights, and they're fake. They're made of foam. And I have a feeling that Boris had the fake weights in the scene. But our, uh, one of our producers, Kia, she kept looking me off camera. She's like, you sure you're okay? And I was, I was just running up and down the street. I'm fine! With a broken toe. Yeah. <laughs> How did you break your toe? In Taekwondo. Uh, I didn't even know you were in Taekwondo. Are you I'm still in almost taekwondo? a black belt. <gasps> yes. I know. I Learn know. something new every day. I did not know this. Yeah. You're it's, badass. Well, it's, it's me engaging in my Korean roots. That's good. That's what Which it is. explain, explain. You do you want to explain Oh, Taekwondo is the national sport of Korea. And you are half Korean? I'm half Korean. They know that. If you watch the well, program. Well, some people don't know. I the last time I'm like, I'm Danielle Savory, I play my official. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. I yes, I'm half Korean. Um, this I love these flashback scenes. I don't know how you felt about them, but when I saw this episode, I was excited for them when I read the script and then I saw the episode. You guys killed these flashbacks. Ah, uh, thank you. They're so good. Thank you. And it's funny because, you know, we were shooting in the desert for, we shot all of these flashbacks in the same day in the desert and, you know, with Paris hazing us because he's hilarious. Um, and, and honestly, Boris and I were getting to know each other because I was still very new to the show. Um, and had you and Boris never met before or worked no, together before? No, no. I thought you guys had for some reason. No, uh-uh. I didn't know that. And so also, this was, you know, getting to know Natasha was still pretty new to me and I was, you know, recovering from a lot of injuries. So I was out of sorts in my body and, and like out of trying to do, you know? And, uh, but coming from growing up on military bases, that was something that I could lock into. You did, you grew up on military bases. Yeah, yeah. My dad was on EOD squad and if you ever saw like Hurt Locker, the explosive ordnance disposal, my dad dis disposed of bombs. It's my job's to ask questions and then you, yeah, I like this. And then you fill in like the backstory of all the stuff. Oh. I, love this. I didn't so, know that. Feeling. Anyway, anyway, I, the, the, the point is, is that a lot was written for me that I was able to kind of like dig in here. And this was a, this was a, an important moment for me to like put some roots in the ground to really, really flesh Natasha out. Did you talk to Alex, the writer, or the, any of the writers about your your personal story, or did they just write Natasha and, and it just happened to have this correlation? You know, I, I think when I when I first joined the show, I had a lot of thoughts up and and uh, you know immediately went to Boris about who they were when they were in the military together and and had offered you know I, I it, you know it was a perfect time period during Desert Storm and all of that that you know there were. Um, 
certain, um, I guess, outfits that were in Iraq at that time, you know, special forces and, and had, had done some research. And I don't know, I, I wonder if that informed it or, or vice versa, but I immediately came in with some ideas about who they were because that really helps me, um, you know, walk more casually in the character, knowing, knowing who she was, where she came from, and then also knowing what this relationship is. And how many episodes had you already shot before you shot the flashback? Do you remember? I think only three. Okay. Look at all these 23 folks. I love them. I'm so glad that um, Carlos, though, at least Theo yeah. came through. Because I was hoping I was saying that last... Shane and Sean. Yeah. I mean. I was hoping some more of the guys would come over. But um, you never know. You, you never, never know. know. They're still firefighters. They're still, you know. Did you just announce you were, sorry, did you just announce you were closing 23? Is that what you just announced? Yeah. Okay. Just to confirm. I want yeah. to make sure. And, I'm, sh and I'm sure you ran lines with the, me on that speech too. <laughs> I'm certain of it. I'm sure, like, just in, in passing, what are you doing? Oh, you want to run lines? Okay. <laughs> I do love running lines. Yeah. And, and you're, and you know, uh, most people who are not in the business probably, you know, would get really annoyed by that, but you love the work. You love the the W R K. <laughs> it's gonna be a new thing. Maybe that's what they already how kids these days. They're like the work, 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 work. Oh, I like that. That's good. This I I love 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 this dynamic between Barrett and Jay. Same. I think I remember this scene too. Is this the scene where he spilt coffee everywhere? I can't remember. Mmm, coffee. I could use some. Yeah, me too. I'm really on that one. Look at you. Like, a million things going on in your head all the time. She's tense. Maya just never stops thinking. I I've forgotten about that thing. <laughs> but, like, it, you're, you just, like, walk through it with, like... And then all of a sudden you're like, what is going on there? You know? Like, it's all, all the... WRK. <laughs> I see all the WRK. That's not gonna be the whole thing. The WRK. <laughs> Two got shut down. Okay. Which means the department is sniffing out any little problem at a station, and we are all under a microscope. Oh my gosh! Did you see Josh in Westworld? No, I heard he was in it, but I haven't seen. Um, I'm probably behind on a season or two. He was fantastic. Westworld by the incredible Lisa Joy Nolan, who I'm a big fan of, another Asian woman. Love her. I did not know that. Yeah. I met her in Brazil. How did you meet her? Just in Brazil. Yeah. Okay. At the, the uh, CCXP. I don't even know what that is, but it sounds good. It sounds it's, cool. it's like It's like their Comic Con. It's like, ah! It's like the, the biggest one. Okay. Oh. This storyline made me hurt. I called the police. Yes, we are a Seattle fire. I'm Travis and you are Virginia. There's no Yeah, I see oh I get all these Brazilian flags. Oi, you gotta say hi to Brazil. Oi, Brazil! Do you speak any Portuguese? I wish. It's a gorgeous language. Obrigada. That's all I know. That means thank you. Or, a big, or oh, never mind. Okay. Yeah, or or enchata is what she was gonna say. Somebody's gonna listen. Be no one is surprised that I cannot. I don't do well with the accents. Oh, Danielle, can you tell them why you're so beautiful? <laughs> so we don't read comments, Maddie. Because then I bless, and then you embarrass me. This scene is kind of kind of what? Kind of what? This scene is kind of. Um, heartbreaking, I gotta say, because if you live in, hey, San Antonio, Texas, I see you, that's where, you know, like, I have a lot of friends in San Antonio, and, um, uh, that's where a lot of people go for their basic training for the Air Force. I'll be in San Antonio what? in, what? What? like, 24 hours. 24, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> life never stops. Um, I can't keep up. My best friend's husband is retiring from the Air Force, so yes. Um, yeah. Air Force. Air Force. See? Yeah, let him have it, Barrett. Look at that name. Let him have it, Barrett. And then, oh, Lachlan, I miss you. If 
I hope you are watching this, which you're probably not, Lachlan, but I miss you so much. He's such a cutie. And such a sweetheart. I love Lachlan. We're still stationed 23 firefighters. And until those doors are chained up and we're locked out, we still have a job to do. So would you just stop? You never wanted to be here in the first Ugh. place. Are you looking down or looking up? Which one are you looking at? Oh, I should look up there. Yeah. Well, either way, I was looking down there's there. a slight delay on this one, but that one, but you can hear it. I just, perfectly. I just miss all these faces that I'm seeing in here, and then I'm just, I just am empathizing the weight of the world on Herrera's shoulders. Oh my gosh. Running that station. Really? Well, and knowing and that she was the reason why. Well, wanting, really wanting the best for her. Oh, 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 here we go. I was so nervous about this scene. I was so nervous. Oh, we rehearsed it ad nauseum. Yes. Look at us, we're so cute. Uh, we cleared out the coffee room. It's right upstairs. Here's fun. Yeah, here's fine. Keep working. I this is fun. I remember, and I remember like, because there's that fine line between a little spastic Maya and neurotic Maya, and like try to be cool and calm and collected. Okay, be cool. Let's watch it. Okay. <laughs> Compliment, compliment. <laughs> Look at all these compliments uh, Natasha's giving her. I know I have to work my way up, but I am excited to do what it takes to earn that position. I like ambition. See, she's so really cheering for her characters. and is so sad I'm about it. But you know, despite the fact that I will not be reinstating you as captain. Oh! Mm. Look at her face. Matter, Dig. Because I prioritize his life over policy. I don't. Did you know, Marine? Dig. There's the. When I was on my Yeah, when somebody's trying to like, you know, when when somebody's trying to break something nice to you, nicely to you, and then they go oh, off no, and yeah. spin a story. Yeah, explain, explain. He went out. It's a compliment sandwich. It's a compliment, which you always, lesson learned, always have to do if you're sending like an email to someone where you want to give constructive Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, positive, and then the constructive considered. And, and, then, a, and then another positive. Positive, always. Always. Okay, so now you're getting a little toed. Well, because, which I stand by this. There is a double standard to this demotion and the holding of this demotion. Agreed, on stage agreed, in agreed, agreed. Hold on, hold on. Let's let's yeah. finish it and then we got to talk about it. We're yeah, gonna pause yeah. after this. You really want that allegation on your record at this time? Yes, McAllister was problematic, but Bishop, your inability to do the job in spite of she that never thought this was gonna be the answer. Your refusal to recognize that, like it or not, being in the fire service means adhering to a chain of command that was and is the problem. And frankly, the fact that you have shown no remorse for any of this behavior does not make me feel confident that you have any intention of ever changing it. Saved by the bell. That's me. Go. Okay, are we pausing? Not now, Sullivan! Oh, sorry, are we pausing? Not now! Am I pausing? Yeah, pause, pause. Pausing. Pause. Okay. Uh-oh. Pause! I know, it's when you point it at the TV, it's harder. Okay. Yeah, no, please, I'll let you start. Okay. <laughs> so, here's, here's the thing. My understanding is that I, 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 do, I do believe that Chief Ross is, will always want what's best for the women in the department. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I do think that she sees Bishop's strength and she sees, why are your arms folded? Because I'm like trying to make back. sure I hear. Look at you. You're on the defense. This isn't about you, Danielle. Oh, but I love Maya. And this, this is like. This isn't about there's you. There's so many storylines that for Maya that I'm like, okay, I totally. I'm like, I can get behind that. That makes sense. I can no, no, no. But listen, listen. This listen. is one that I was like. Listen. Why? listen. No, I totally hear you. Okay, okay. But, I'm not. I'm uncrossing my arms. But like. Merle feels like I'm being aggressive. Okay. <laughs> but the thing is, is I, I think that she really. And mind you, we didn't write this. Okay. Alex Fernandez did, who did an amazing job. And the entire writer's room. And the entire this. writer's room, yes. So, the, it, and my understanding is that Chief Ross wants to cultivate um, a, winning, a winning circumstance for Bishop. You know okay. what I mean? Okay, yeah. And I think that one of the things, one of, like, 
some of her, not necessarily what happened, not necessarily the incident at hand, mm -hmm. but a couple of things, the way that Bishop responded to the information. Yeah. And then, and then her actions after might have been indicators that there is a little bit of growth to be had before she becomes the captain that Ross thinks that she should be. Okay. You know? Yeah. And I think some of the best leadership that I've ever had, um, the opportunities I wanted at the time were not given to me and I and I was offered, I will say offered an opportunity, maybe that's the military kid in me, to grow and to, to um, I don't know, develop my character a little bit more in order mm -hmm. to, you know, because we're talking about life or death circumstances. And, yeah. and I think that the bit, if, if I were to be like Bishop's therapist, I would be like, you know, you got to put your own os oxygen mask on first, girl. Yeah. Oh, I was you know what I mean? That yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. And I'd just be like, you got to take care of yourself. Yeah. And then I, as, as Ross, I could say, then I see the leader in you. But then Bishop just came at her throat. You know what I mean? And in so, the same? Yeah. Well, so here's my thing. Okay. I could see your perspective and what you're saying about with Chief Ross, but you don't say that. Instead, mm -mm. your words say that you disobeyed orders, which the hard part on our show is I feel like the men on our show seem to disobey orders a lot and then get reinstated. And mm. the women, and the women, mm. and for some reason, the women do things like that and don't. Mm -hmm. So it's a weird thing, and <laughs> it's how I feel, Danielle Savory, about mm -hmm. the women on the show. And so it was a weird, um, but I could also say that, um, it might be in an interesting, cause I, it even occurred to me like with, with all of this, you know, you could, I don't know, you could even say it might be even morally or, or professionally ambiguous behavior that, um, Ross has got going on with Sullivan that, um, it, it's a good, hey, it's a good opportunity I don't know if she, if she was if she did lose her position. I don't want to see a woman of color, you know, losing her, or or you know, stepping outside of bounds or anything like that. But you get to really see what somebody's made of when they go through an adversity, and yeah. then when they find their way back. Absolutely, so, you know. And I think that this long road of Bishop finding her way back is important, especially as she looks for her own healing. I think it's important for women to see her doing that and facing oh, yeah. it. Yeah. I agree with that. I think it's just this exact scene and the exact moment and how it was just described as you don't know how to take orders, you disobeyed orders. I wish it had been, thank you, Maddie. The dogs just want to like, oh, it said Ford loud. is all of us. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ford said, I don't want to hear none of that. <laughs> Listen, it's because I think, I think Maya absolutely respects Chief Ross. I think this is a blow and she didn't think this was going to happen because she thought Chief Ross would understand her perspective and why she did what she did. Mm. She saved a life. All she did was disobey the chief who, if they hadn't used that engine to take the kid to the hospital, might have died. Mm. So let alone they used the engine because there weren't any ambulances, they also saved a kid. So it wasn't like anyone died and all they did was use a resource that they were using. So it, I feel like how hopeful Maya is at the beginning is very much like she respects Chief Ross. She expect, it respects this woman who's in a power position in the fire department. She wants to be like Chief Ross. Mm -hmm. And then she just gets like, and it's good for TV. It adds drama and the whole thing. So mm -hmm. I get it. But I'll never like, I think as Maya, I do agree. I love to see her go through this change, which we're obviously all seeing. It's mm -hmm. happening for seasons now. Mm-hmm. And she's growing as a person and she'll overcome all of this and hopefully. So I, I do agree with that, but it's just like the conversation itself. It's like, damn, mm. it was like, a, mm -hmm. I wish that the conversation would have been, I understand why you did what you did, but I have to make an example out of you. But yeah, but you know what? Human inter interaction isn't perfect. No, no, no you know, Absolutely. you might come in with one set of, of ideas or, or, you know, high, high hopes for a, you know, high level kind of conversation. Yeah. And then suddenly somebody gets triggered mm -hmm. and it starts to spiral fat, you know, and, and Ross and Bishop don't know each other that well mm -hmm. or barely at all. So, you know, and you know, her being new to, and having, you know, like a, I guess a rep to protect or whatever. I don't know. There, there's a, there's a lot of things that are at play here that, that obviously these two people are bumping heads and yeah. this could have gone better.
But would it have been interesting? Would we be still talking about it a year later? I wish I would be interested in seeing, I mean, I always have to be careful what I say and don't say, um, to, to really see uh, Bishop and Ross go at it. Oh, me too! And, these, and we have so oh much fun. Oh my God, we have a really good time. So it hasn't happened yet, but I feel like a scene like that of both of us really going at it, and, and Maya still being pissed about this situation, and you getting the opportunity to explain what you're telling me, would be a really great scene to, I think, in the end, really bond our characters. Oh my God, you remember that, that scene when um, you came in and, and like called Sully and I out? <laughs> you mean the black now scene at the end of season yeah. five? Yeah, and then I <laughs> hit you on the way out. I was like, oh my God, are you okay? I didn't mean to hit you. Oh, I remember, yes. So in that episode, and that would have been five, five eighteen, I think, or whatever that was, the I season finale of season five. At the end of that blackmail scene, because I think the episode ends on me just saying it. You guys don't walk out mm -hmm. anymore. But we shot them walking out, and there was a take where you walk out and just shoulder check me. And oh, that's in the cut. Is it? Do you walk cut. out in the? I cut? think so. Do, is do we you guys know? walk out? <laughs> we We're like, do you we guys did. know? I know. Uh, How can you have good eyesight? I can't see that this far away. I'm. Actually, almost legally blind, but my contacts are in. Um, does anybody remember? I do a shoulder check her. Yes, yeah, she does. So I, she, yes. yeah, and I remember you being, you're like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> After they said cut, and I was like, no, but it's then, you, great. then you were like, I like it, and I then I just it. couldn't replicate it. I kept like trying to. You After know, that, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't do it again, but I think they took the one that that um, was, was the first one. <laughs> I totally forgot about that until you just mentioned that. Oh, I remember, and I do remember you trying to recreate it. Yeah, and I couldn't like, do I it. Can't I can't, do, can't it. do it. It was just that first instinctual one, like, oh, really? Yep. Because we got into it. Uh, yeah. We, like, locked eyes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Which is good times. hilarious. I, I really, you, it's, you can go there with somebody that you like. Yeah. You know, when it feels safe like that, then yeah. you can really like butt heads in front of the camera because it's safe, you know? And you it's know, fun. The, the, it's fun. Yeah. Yep. Um, well, I guess we can continue then. Okay. Uh, Maddie, anything, any comments or notes that are coming up question wise that we might be able to answer right now? People are really engaged with this conversation, especially because we're going to be taking it through to the whole next part of the season. So there's a lot of interest in what you guys are bringing to the table about how we got to the place that we're in now. Like, what do you expect? Um, how do you, without revealing too much, like, how do you think that Ross and Bishop's relationship is going to develop, like, moving forward from here? Would you like to answer or do you want me to answer? Go ahead. <laughs> Just have to wait and see. <laughs> I think that um, there's a lot of space because I think they're both extremely focused, extremely hardworking, mm -hmm. often by the book kind of people. I think they're more similar than they are different. Um, okay. It's just, um, I, I, Ross is a little older, that's all. Has more wisdom. I don't know about even wisdom, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe a little more experience. Yeah. That's, that's I think that's wisdom. it, you know? Um, because I think something my dad used to always say, you know, comes from the mouth of babes. You can learn something from anybody. And mm -hmm. I think that, um, you know, even people that, that um, you know, might not have your best interest at heart, you can learn, you can always learn something from people. And, um, and they can teach you something about yourself as well. And so when I think about the relationship between them, I, I see a lot of opportunity for, um, I don't know, for them to lift one another up down the line. Mm -hmm. But but ultimately, I think Ross rides for the women in the department. I, 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 and I think at the, the core of it, she mm -hmm. really wants Bishop to succeed. She just does not want all of her, her current issues to thwart her long-term success. So the only I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna say something that I don't want you to get upset if I say this. Why would I get upset? Okay, we're talking about the characters. Right. You're not talking right. about right. them personally, right? right? No. no. So, upset. <laughs> so the only thing that contradicts that, which I th I agree with you on all of this, and the only thing that contradicts it is you is you. Is it happened in the show? Yes, this was last season. As you promoting Sullivan for a day. I know, but still. Yeah, but that's that was that's still trashy. That's the one time that, that, that was contradicts what you're saying. And no, I, I also, but I do agree that Chief Ross is struggling with the fact, which I think we're going to see this evolve more and more, with her her leadership's her position of leadership mm -hmm. versus her heart. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. I'm loving that I think we're going to play that more and more. But I am excited, if the Raiders are listening at all, of that scene of, of Natasha and Maya kind of going at it finally. Because I do think your intentions are about the women in the department and lifting up women and supporting women and teaching women of the department. Do we fight? Do we like fight fight? I mean, I would love to see that scene. I mean, not fit. I mean, we can physically fight if you want to, but I think it would be, I think we're women that use our words. I think it would be a very yeah, yeah. well written by the writer's words, you know, scene where. You we, don't want to throw down? We can throw down if you want. <laughs> I mean, that's a whole different scene, but I'm down. What do you guys want? Do you want a physical throw down or do you want a verbal throw down? Tell us. We'll put that in the like question box after. Okay, we should start the episode. Okay, good. Okay. How, that one was behind, right? So should I, you want to do that one first and then I'll start this one? Yeah, do you want to give everyone Oh, yeah. Two? Okay, ready? Yeah. You want to give this one? Swiper, three? stop swiping. <laughs> three, two, go. 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 Not yet. I don't think it's there yet. It's yeah, not there yet. It is? Go. Are you sure? Yeah. And no. Okay, sorry. Okay, look, it's not your fault that your resident had the So he's still behind the couch. You tell him next time, keep his hands to himself. That one's a head. I think it's just fine. Okay. I overthink things. I think it's good. A bare knuckles fight. <laughs> Did someone say a bare knuckles? You're going to have to read what they say because I can't see it this far away. Do you need glasses? I have contacts in, but I'm already at a negative six for anyone who wears contacts. I know what that means. Oh, you, you are. I No, I'm blind. Do you have um, stigmatisms? No, I have Just bad eyesight. I thought this actress was so great. It's, we yeah. said that she was only in one episode. Yeah, she is great. <laughs> Cynthia, her name was Cynthia. Good to see you both. You remember everyone. She is like the welcoming, oh, I love her, Barbara. Um, she's great, too. She's fantastic, guys. So is his, his mom and dad, Oak's mom and dad are great yeah. actors. Um, I guess I should be watching the TV because I'm this one. Danielle is like the welcoming um, committee at the show. Like, she was the first person who said hi to me when I first got to the show. Oh, really? Yeah, and you were like, I loved you on Truth Be Told. I love you. I mean, just that was the other show. so welcome. Oh, yeah, Friday's on, on uh, Apple, Truth Be Told as well. Just to give a little plug for Merle is Merle is on the ABC's number one rated show is Station 19. I believe, I hope I'm quoting that right, at least in the lives. Um, and oat milk. Oh, look at this, she got a little Starbucks. Is this from, is this mine? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what? I don't know what's Maddie, happening. Maddie delivering a cappuccino with oat milk. We need this. Work. Yeah, because well, I'm wait, tired. Wait, wait, Number one rated show on ABC, number one rated on show on Apple TV with Truth Be, Truth Be Told, and number one rated show on HBO with The Last of Us. All at once, which Merle. is kind of cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Okay, so my big episode in The Last of Us is the last one. Make sure you tune in. Which is episode 10? Episode 9. 9. Which also happens to be Oscar night, which is crazy. No. Um, <gasps> that gave me chills. That gave me chills. Does Ross also know martial arts? I hope she does. They've got to put that in there. Okay, side note to this scene, because it's obviously tragic. Oh my gosh, yes. But I, I heard, I wasn't there this day, that Paris sprayed something that smelled horrible in that room and didn't tell the actors Dear that Paris. when they opened the door, they actually, and maybe didn't comment if they're there. I only heard this rumor and I actually never confirmed it with anybody. I love Paris. Love, love, love. See, it doesn't bother you that they're not timed out right, but it's driving me crazy. I'm like, don't look down, just look up. Just, just watch the program. Just watch, just the, watch program. the program. You know what? Consider it double the pleasure. You know, you're like, oh, I saw, I'm seeing it here. And, and I'm seeing it again. Oh my and gosh. It again. There's so much firefighting. It's a very positive turn on the fact that these are off instead of me who usually freaks out. This guy, this also, these guest stars. I love, I really love what the, the guest stars bring to the show too. Okay, so when you said we were going to watch 513, I had to watch it again. And honestly. Tell me. Oh my First of all, the performances were were fantastic. I've, I have a lot of you know my own feelings of watching myself a year ago when I was still like injury prone and all of that. But because um, of your foot, my what foot. Was I was injured? I was I was coming back from a hamstring tear and I, I hadn't been able to like really move for quite some time. So I, I had put on some weight. You know, I just was outside of my body last year. And watching it again, I was like, man, I can even see how different I am. It's so wild. 
You wouldn't have noticed. I had no idea. That really? You it's okay. It's okay. Are you serious? Swipe or stop active. swiping. Uh, Daniel, can yeah. you talk to Brazil? They love you. Hi, Brazil. Say oi, Brazil. Oi, Brazil. 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 Obrigada. Obrigada. Obri. Obri. Gata. Gata. I've heard that one before. I know that one. Mm -hmm. Obrigata. Mm -hmm. I think I kind of got it that way. Oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> Thanks, <She's>, bro. <laughs> I mean, she's a Portuguese <laughs> goddess, obviously. <laughs> um, that uh, candy fire, I remember like trying to figure out how to make that candy factory fire work was really tough, but I thought they did a great job. And I thought costumes, give props oh, to costumes. Yeah, yeah. They had to make the outfits. The crunchy like sugar stuff. And they did episode. such a great job. Every episode we do an employee of the episode or a department of the episode kind of is what it ends up working out. And I wonder if they, I think costumes or wardrobes had to have had it once, but that would have been one that they should have gotten. Mm-hmm. They do such a wonderful job. I love our costumes. Agreed. Department. Okay. Now, now, Ramel, Kendall, what? Cleo, Rebecca, what's up? <laughs> yeah, and Maggie, who does all of our... All, all of the our, alterations. All our alterations. That's how we look so hot. They, those... We have an episode coming up in the future where everyone had to wear jumpsuits, mm -hmm. and man, did those not fit, and then Maggie altered every single one. And yeah, yours was like altered within an inch of its life. I was Damn like, right it yours was. was like couture. I was like, oh, I see what's happening. I was happening. like, we can take it go, in a little bit more. I, I have to go a little farther. <laughs> that, that also happened in these Iraq um, flashbacks yeah. where I was, I was so like, Oh yeah, this T-shirt's fine, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like just hanging out. And then <laughs> Boris comes to set, and his his like tailored. Mm -hmm. ah! See, so you like, had to learn from us quick. We're like, yeah. well, you gotta tailor this stuff. Make I was good. like, and he was like, yeah, you need to take that in. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I never did, but yeah, I, you didn't need to. You didn't need to. You Girl, please. in your military attire. Thank you. But the the um the scene between um Oak's parents and uh, Miranda and Ben, mm -hmm. I just it breaks my heart because you know when when people are when people are like holding on and so like I don't know in in unbending unpenetrable there's usually something behind it and to find out what's going on yeah. with that family and what they're actually contending with and how they're just kind of being so rigid to hold on to one any little thing it just gives you so much empathy for people who might be tough to talk to yeah i know i can be tough to talk to really yeah that i don't find that to be true oh yeah um it's a great way to put it and i think it was such a well played out storyline that these parents that weren't very close to their son because they had their opposing opinions and yeah. then their son passes away in such a tragic way Ugh. and his child has to go to a family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just think what, you know, especially right now with so many people in deep grief yeah. and deep PTSD, those kinds of stories, the nuance of them just means so much. Um, it does. I, I just, I feel like every other person I know is in, in, in extraordinary grief right now. Are you saying just from what we've all been through as, in, in the world in the last years? Well, that and then, years, and then the, the fallout of grief. it, you know? There's yep. a lot of people passing and there's a lot of, yep. uh, you know, uh, there's just a lot of, a lot of grief. I, in the world right now. Yeah, I, 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 I know a lot of people are, are contending with how to handle that. I didn't want to work in place. This kid is really good. He did such a great job. You are always standing over somebody like trying not to like vomit all of your issues out on people. <laughs> Maya's got a lot of them. Um, She's always like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's your band-aid. What else? Well, I remember too. That scene was so much fun to shoot. That scene was so much fun to shoot because he's like, "Keep throwing it harder. Throw throwing him harder. Throw him harder." And it was so hard not to laugh every time because, as you know, he's so damn funny. Who Shane? Shane is oh. so funny. He's very funny. Was this when you were doing all those TikToks with him? You had like a TikTok era. We shot a TikTok 
at this location. That was where we shot the one. I think I only did the one TikTok. We need to do them. more TikToks. Let's do some TikToks. I'd, I'd be down. We just gotta find time, and lately we haven't really been. We lately we haven't been in the there's no the same time. time. There's just there's no time. We will find it. We will find it. I don't have time for chicks. I literally. Well, we were doing something, and I was just like, I'm gonna, gonna go into my dressing room. room, and yeah, and I was just like, yeah. I'm gonna go and do a TikTok over lunch, and I fell asleep. <laughs> Honestly, though, it's kind of, I loved how you did that because it was like a stressful day and both, and you were like, I'm just going to do a TikTok right now to take my mind off of like all the dialogue and all these dramatic scenes. And it was a really, I was like, that's actually really smart. You know what it is, is being, I think a, a stage person and, and I'd, I'd never, I never really like dance just to dance. I always dance to somebody's choreography that it like goes along with somebody else's storyline, you know, and I had been like 15 years on the Broadway stage. And so then to not have that kind of movement in my life and my day-to-day -day life anymore. Sometimes a TikTok just makes me like happy, you know? Nostalgic I miss, I miss the stage, bit. yeah, I miss it. So then going back to you and your history in this industry, is that where you started? Did you start in theater? Yeah, yeah. And how did that come to be? Um, so when I was in high school, a friend of mine I went to church with was like, you should take drama. It's an easy elective. And so I did. All the cool drama kids were going to the International Thespian Festival. So I went and I got a full ride to school, which I would, you know, we had wait, very little. Wait, wait. Just... No, I'm not even kidding you. I, I went and I got a full ride to school. And this is how I knew my military kid work ethic, just running at whatever. It, it, if, if you do it with your whole self, you know, you're, you'll get somewhere. But also it was kind of survival. I wasn't going to go to college unless I got a full ride. Mm -hmm. I would, you know, that, there was, you know, when, when I turned 18, my dad was like, you're on your own. Did you think there was anything else you wanted to do? Was there anything else you had your kind of mindset on before this kind of pivot? Um, well, you know, I liked sports, even though I was bad at them. Um, that can't be true. You're in Taekwondo. You must have been good with sports, some sports. You well, it, well, except that nobody taught me what to do. You know, we don't have anybody athletic in my family. And I grew uh, up in Nebraska where everybody is, like, doing sports when they're three. You know, so... Is that true? Every... I didn't know that. <laughs> I mean, everybody... You're either, you know, like... You detassel corn in the summer, and then you, you know, then you, you do all the sports. You know, you, you do... Um, like everybody's really big in Nebraska. I think I don't know if it's being corn fed and all the pesticides or whatever, but all the steroids and the meat. But everybody's really big. So all the so you know, you're corn fed, you know, we're playing football, we're out there playing uh, basketball, volleyball. We don't want to see this. Oh for heaven's sake. I just want to see it, but I do have to talk about detasseling corn. I think is what you call it. I'm looking at the rose screen. This I think I do forever. This is what I'm hoping for. I wish I had sat back in this How a little bit more. Stop it! You're so, so good in this. You know, I'm a good guy about this whole package business. I got movement. I'm trying. Got me quiet. Give me a read. Yeah, corn huskers. Go big red. Is someone saying that? I just believe, I believe everything that's coming out of your mouth. Because, listen, wait, 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 scene's not done. Because this is a good scene. I love how the writers are so collaborative. I remember saying, what do you think about Iraq? And they were like, that, I don't know, chicken or the egg? Um, I, they, they probably already thought of that. Maybe I just thought of it peripheral, parallel. When I tell you to take a shot, you take it. You take it. I want you to say, you take the damn shot. <laughs> when I tell you to take a shot, you take it. So, oh, it's such a good scene. My, my dad. So when we much. would, we always travel cross country, and he's, a, you know, a CB radio kind of person. So, so we were, I was always on the CB, and and you know, my dad is a real strict kind of military guy. So mm -hmm. I have the, the the cadence is kind of locked in, mm -hmm. you know, and he would just be like, it is a very specific cadence. 
Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I didn't yeah, yeah. Okay. No, that's all. That's all there is. And he was like, I cut you off. You were in a sentence. You were going to say something. No, I don't have anything to say. I do that a lot. I interject when people are talking and then they forget what they meant to say. What? Now, I. Um. Yeah, so then after I graduated, or after I got the scholarship, I just, uh, you know, went to Chicago. I did, and then I started a theater company there. And you know so what? Nebraska really to Chicago. Where was Nebraska to Chicago. Chicago. Okay. As soon as I graduated Chicago, I loaded up a U Haul and went to New York and been working as an actor ever since. But you know what's really funny? What's kind of full circle because if you've been watching The Last of Us, this, like one of the great shows that I did in Chicago is where I met Nick Offerman and how he's on The Last of Us with, with me. And he just had this great episode. You just watched it. I just watched it. You finally watched it. Last night I was like, I just need to decompress and watch something and I watched it and it was so beautiful. Uh, it's wait, wait, so did you watch the first one yet? Yeah. Oh. No, I told you I watched the first did one. Did you? Yeah, I came to set and I was like, I finally watched it. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I think it was the day that that we were stressed and we had to do TikTok. <laughs> but we didn't do TikTok. <laughs> Um, Why were we stressed? I can't remember. It was a, it was a, it was, a, it was, a, was it a double up day on top? But we shoot sometimes. There's one day, two days. Technically, every episode we were shooting two episodes the same day, and you had all the dialogue. It's fine. I usually do. Yeah, it's very true these days. But you had a lot to say, and you were tired because you were doing press for both all this. Uh, oh yeah, the last that was week. I was doing press and, and truth, truth be told, told that week. I was yeah. Words confused. But yes, you were doing all the press that week, and you had all the words on our show, and it was a double up day, and you were like, I'm so tired. Yeah. Um, but question though, how long were you in Chicago for? And did you like Chicago? I love Chicago. Chicago, if I could live there all the time, I would. Some of the best acting, some of the best theater, some of the best sports fans. Like, yes. um, and then the, the city is so fun in the summer. Um, you know, hanging out in sports bars, going to Wrigley Field. Whoa. Oh, my first job was at Comiskey Park in the, um, in the, uh, the, the suites, the VIP suites. And this is for you kids, before there were cell phones, there was long distance <laughs> companies like Sprint and MCI, and you could get yes. like you could get like calling cards to call <laughs> long distance. I now I that. was in this doggone suite with as a MCI card like this with just legs with black stockings and heels no. on, walking around with in the suite. Card. It, no, like that. It was my whole you outfit. Were in the card. I was the oh. card. Do you have a picture of this? Of Somewhere. course I don't. Oh, oh, come on. Of course I don't. Some of the things that I did that during college, well, that was man. Before iPhones too, where you could take a picture of your phone. Could you even take oh, a picture yeah. of your phone? You didn't. Cell phones weren't even. You don't. Ha we didn't have cell phones in the nineties. So I'm crazy. so old. I'm changed. old as hell. No, I mean I was there too. Like you are like half my age. I mean I was born in eighty. Stop it. Ouch. Stop it, Ouch. girl. You look my age. I don't even know how old you are. She was born in eighty-eight. These most of the people on here were probably born in like two thousand, right? How old we? No, two thousand would be. Here's the thing, though. Yeah. Like, two, oh, but after two thousand. Wait. What are you thinking? Are you watching? Yeah. This I'm seat just, was beautiful. <gasps> There's one thing They're I have so to say. good. They're so good. And I'm going to say one thing that I got. I got upset with Harry. If Harry's watching our A camera operator. But this scene is beautiful. I love Harry. Love Harry. Look at them. I'm like, wait, I'm not watching right now. Oh, he. <gasps> and then Vic and Theo look at each other. There's a connection there. Travis says his funny line. They're in love. Oh, Theo and Vic again. Travis, funny line. <laughs> that pause. Okay, so Harry lied to me. So I'm standing there. Not to make this about me, because it's not about me or Maya. But I guess. Look at her just mad. Like, just Maya. resentful. But like, there's all this beauty happening. There's this seam. Oh, wait, let me see this scene. Okay, you have to go back. I'm hanging out at the back of the engine, and Harry's like, I'll tell you when to go. And I'm like, I feel like I'm just standing here. He's like, no, I can't see you. Lie. You just see me standing there. And it makes absolutely no sense, and it's weird anyways. It's not about that. But it drives me crazy, and I had to get mad at Harry. Sorry, I'm watching. I'm watching. Because what did her mother just say to you? She was like... So you know what? Doing okay? I forgot. 
What did she just say? This was a I think, scene she, I think it was an encouragement. Like, y'all are just... Oh, don't be so hard on yourself, Andy. You're doing that your makes, best. But that what makes makes her strive to be the best. Is she is so hard on herself. I mean, that's obviously not. You shouldn't always be so hard on yourself. But. You know, but also this self reflection is also good. I, you know, like it's going to make her when when we see her ascend to the throne of nineteen. <clears throat> it's going to mean so much more because she's done all of this amazing work. Again, like you said earlier, it's all about like the journey all of our characters are on, right? And mm -hmm. you have to see them go through that struggle and work their way up and have their, you know, fall a couple times and get back up. And then that's also like the difference between, you know, say a, a limited series or a film and then a long running show. Oh, wait, it's it's more interesting to watch the characters striving, right? And to ha watch them fall down. So they have to keep you know, going through these trials that make them better. With a long-running show. Versus yes. Versus series. Yes, yes. Which is the goal, right? To have Station Yeah, and, and, and to have people yeah. stay engaged and, and root for the characters. But if they've got it all figured out, what are you tuning in for? Which has also got to be so hard for writers because I feel like at some point, you're like, how do they keep evolving? I don't want to work with French food, but I can't do any of that until we finish this. Tell this is over. Do you understand me? Then take the shot. He kept saying, say it faster, say it faster. Like, okay. <laughs> Just everybody. Oh, that's nice. Everybody says I look phenomenal. <laughs> or my <Yes>. age. <laughs> you always look phenomenal, bro. You know what it is? Black and Asian. <laughs> We're also getting a lot of love for your Criminal Minds episode. <laughs> Agent Lynn Brooks. I want to see. Wait, I want to see the scene, but I want to see the Criminal Mind. We might have to do a watch party for Criminal My Minds episode. Criminal Minds episode. Oh, you know what's funny? I did an episode of The Mentalist, and Pedro Pascal's in it. No. Yeah. Yeah. So The Mentalist and Criminal Minds. There might be watch parties going on for other shows, but I'm at, at, at future dates. Who is also uh, hosting SNL this week? <gasps> I think I did see that. Somewhere. I'm so excited. He's he is hilarious. He's gonna be amazing. Do you think there's something in particular that helps you like tap into a character that has such a high profile pro profession, like somebody who is? Who are you talking to? You. Mary, <laughs> What's the question? Like being a criminal agent, or like doing something with the, within the military that's as high profile as like being like a, a sniper coordinator. Like, how do you like tap into that specific like role that requires such intensity? Because I'm a like... boss. <laughs> that's why. No, you, you are. You are. You're so good at. Because I'm a boss. And that's the thing is, I think these high profile characters that stay cool under pressure, does that resonate true to like who you are as a person? Or no. is it all true? No. I would disagree with you. I'm a I'm total just... dork. Yeah, I we should pause. Oh, but I will say, I come from a family a of, speech. of uh, doctors and nurses who, and, and obviously, and military. yeah, military, who, you know, in a high stress situation, keep calm. Yeah, I get very calm. But that's what I was going to say is I have seen you do that. Like, I know you say you're, like, funny and a dork and all those things, but, like, God, you're so funny. Still putting Vicks underneath his nose. Um, I want to pause it. so hard to... I know you say you're a dork, but you are very calm and cool and collected under pressure. Mm. I think so, from an outsider's perspective. That's hilarious because you see all my meltdowns share when you share uh, a dressing room with me. I don't speak Spanish, you know, and I lived in Harlem hola, for a long estás? time. You do? Um, hola, como estas? Oh, no, she doesn't. And then bien, y tu? Stop. That's, that's, Stop. That's something. <laughs> I'm sorry, I tried my best. That's all I got. There's a couple that was, other words. That was, real, you know what, Thanks I appreciate. Know. When you go to another country, people it, appreciate the effort. How are you? They appreciate that effort, I think, right? Because... Yeah, so anyway, wonderful. Thanks. I'll take Thanks that back. Girl. Wonderful. Thanks, Good job. Um, I lived in Harlem for like several well, years. Well, you went to New York. 
Yeah, when I lived okay. when I lived in New York. Uh, by the and way, I, I love them together. I and know the they're scene, so cute. When I saw it, was such a cute because you know they're that true. they came up with like the how sexy the scene was. It wasn't on the page. She comes in, she kisses him, that's it, and they milked the heck out of this. And I love. They're so cute. Love the scene and them together. I'm sorry, you you were in Harlem. Oh yeah, and I used to always get my hair done uh, at the Dominican salon, and they just. They thought I was lying because everybody thinks I'm Dominican. Really? Yeah. I mean, everybody thinks I'm Dominican. They're like, uh, and they would always speak to me in Spanish and be offended when I wouldn't speak back. And I was like, man, I don't. When I get went to get my rollo set, I'm just attacking Danny. No, I'm not. No, she's not. This so crazy is like this is such an immediate scene of like. Travis just says, I don't, I didn't love him. And now Lachlan's like, I want to be together. This life is just too damn short to be this complicated. So can we just pretend They're really sweet together. Yeah, they are. I miss Lachlan so much. Where is a little Lachlan poop? He has a show on, I got to touch base with him. He was in town. He had a show on Netflix or has a show that I don't know. I don't think it's come out yet. Do you know Arabic? Then, I don't know. We gotta find out. And then he, had, he was doing Dynasty still oh, for awesome. CW. Love that. And he did, I think, an episode of The Rookie. I don't know. So I got. Uh, you realize you broke hip with the Bills yesterday? Nope. Oh, I, Grace was an icon on Greenleaf. Thanks for watching Greenleaf. I appreciate it. That going back to so Nebraska to Chicago, Chicago to New York. Mm -hmm. You said 15 years, was it 15 years of yeah, theater you know, in New York or just 15 years of theater from the start of doing it? Well, school? the first two years I was there, I left. I did uh, I did a tour of Smokey Joe's and then I went to Italy and all of your, all of the, 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 uh, the countries that circumnavigate like Switzerland, that area. Um, this is for a, a play, a musical? Yeah, Amos Behave, and this is right wow. before I made my Broadway debut, way back in 98, 99. Wow. So that's when I, and I <gasps> and I had the wonderful time, like six months in, in Italy, so those who were saying, dude, I know Italian, I knew Italian then, because I, I knew those I cute Italian boys. I forgot this episode had this scene. Babe, so I decided Let's we're watch. still celebrating. There are so many things to celebrate. I can't. This scene I'm was so hard to shoot. Why? Angry and frustrated. Oh, and no. to throw things and get this out of my system. Because you, this scene was the cool of like coming home and finally saying like I didn't get my so job back. Let me be pissed for a little bit. And Paris had me do it all these different ways because you know when you have to do a scene where you're feeling all the things but you're not supposed to show that you're feeling all the things. Yeah, yeah. I think it's beautifully done, Danielle. Both beautiful. But I remember being like. Anyways, I totally forgot that this scene ended but this episode. this is... No, this, this right here is, is, is... No, 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 I know. But this is... Which she's just like, bottle, this bottle, 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 and then... <laughs> I like lost, by the end of this, I was like, it was my voice was gone. No, okay. So great. Anyways, I had forgotten that scene was here. I have now watched watch this flashback. I don't want to watch this one. Why? I love the ring light in the middle of the TV still. I don't know what war changes you, but I didn't think it would change me this much. I had this weird paint in my hair to try to make it dark rather than just have my highlights. I don't know how find this kids. Really? And it has a strange texture to it because of the paint. But you noticed that. I wouldn't have noticed that. Does anyone else notice that? Look at it. I mean, I'm looking. Let me look at this monitor. I'm so blind. See, to me, it just... It's, how it's kind of like stuck to my head. I get... To me, it looks like, like you've been out... Uh, like on a mission, well, you know what I mean, for days. It looks more like a woman that needs to shower versus. <laughs> versus. <laughs> it, no, you just look smelly and stank. I mean, listen, I don't have a problem. Oh, with that. Look at this scene, Merle. You look real, you look like you need a bath. 
You like, you Listen, need some zest fully clean, honey. I like a woman that is can get dirty and rough and tumble and the whole thing. To me, that is not a negative. I didn't mean it in a negative. She went, I she went catfishing and put like the mud in her hair. You look like a badass that needs to have a shower. And you're going to go have it with Sullivan. Ah. <laughs> oh, my God. Hilarious. Woo! Hey, I think I probably said it at the wrong time. I wooed at the wrong time because I'm looking at the wrong screen. I had a hard time with this moment right Why? here. Tr trying to pretend like I don't know him. I was like, ah, oh, ha, ha. And I actually that... was like, Boris, fix it. Tell me what to do. He was just like, and, and, he's, and he's also going to be a great director on the show too. Yeah. I think he's going to direct next season, right? I think so. I, I can't we have history. when he's looking all serious you don't know what a goofball he is off stage I will try to like have a have a um a serious speech talking to everybody and he will have a colander on his head yeah no Boris is a total goofball that no one I don't think anyone knows that I mean, how can you not know that? Like, look at him. He's just like about ready to start mischief. He's like, <laughs> that's because we know him. But like, every interview he's ever done, every character he's ever played. Great job, Merle. Great job, Paris and Alex. That Good was... job, everyone. Good job, everyone. Good job, everyone. Here, I'm gonna pause this. I think you have to pause that one too, <sighs> Maddie. I do want to go back though to just kind of your backstory because I love kind of this is the opportunity to tell people like who you are and everything. So you did. You toured that, that one musical, and mm -hmm. then you went back to New York. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I toured two musicals, and then I went back to New York, and I did back-to-back um, -back Broadway shows. I did a revival of Superstar in 2000. I did Aida on the road and then on Broadway at the Palace. I did uh, Rent on and off for like eight years. And who else and did then, Rent? I have to Oh, out. Tracy Toms was also in Rent. Actually, I put Tracy into Rent because here's the thing. I, was, I had left Rent to go do Tarzan, came back to Rent, and then was going to go back, leave, and close Spamalot because I was going to leave... I was gonna leave. I was gonna either take leave rent to do Tarzan or to go replace Sada Ramirez in in Spamalot for Lady of the Lake. But instead, I ended up leaving rent to go do Spamalot, and which um, a, another thing happened. And I was gonna do both. I was gonna close rent and do Spamalot at the same time. But uh, a contract issue came up, so Tracy came in for the last six weeks of it, and I got to teach her the track. So that's actually, I think, how Tracy and I met. Um, and then she closed the show, and we became friends forever. For those that don't know, Tracy Toms plays Diane. Her therapist. Everyone's therapist at <laughs> the show. But yes, the Station 19 in-house therapist. Um, so yes, and then... And then I went back to, to... And then I went back to Broadway after doing a bunch of TV like in 2018, something like that, on, on, my, on my hiatus from Greenleaf, I went back to do um, Once on this Island. And where was Greenleaf shot in Atlanta? Atlanta. And when did you do these Criminal Minds and... I don't remember. The Mentalist episodes. I honestly do not remember. I can't wait to see these episodes. That is so wild. Um, and then when did you move from New York to L.A.? You know, I've, I've done it a couple of times. Really? Um, yeah. I first came out, I came out for like a couple of months in 2002 and I did a show at Pasadena Playhouse. Then I came out again in, with, after Spam Out closed on Broadway, I did the whole tour and, and down the West Coast and, and the West Coast, um, the West Coast uh, premiere of it. And landed at the Amundsen in LA and ended up staying and then ended up doing it with Eric Idle at the Hollywood Bowl. Which what is an really amazing cool. career. Yeah. Wow. yeah. And yeah, you it's... like are just getting started. Because of the crazy it feels part. like I'm getting started <laughs> at my big age. It feels Stop like I'm just it. getting started, which is crazy. But, it, but it's also like, you know, I, I think the, the overarching theme, what, what I could tie that back to is like, you know, when when it's your time it's your time but sometimes there's there are things and you know i'm gonna 
get a little bit into my own spirituality, which is which is this that I believe that you you know you are you are being um, molded and guided and given the tools for your time for such a yeah. time there's sometimes there are things that need to percolate and sometimes you are being hedged from something that you might injure yourself in or you know you 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 might need to or your blessing might be over here instead of what you're looking at right there and i think the the overarching theme that i could say about my journey is that yeah some of those twists i didn't sweat I didn't sweat them because I knew something better was coming. And also I had to do my work. I had to do my work and, you know, like getting um, my heart together, getting my life together, getting my, uh, getting my traumas worked out for myself so that I could, you know, walk with freedom in my life and freedom in my work and all of that. Um, you don't want to, you know, walk around with a big bag on your back. It's beautifully put. It's so much easier said than done when those oh. big, like, Hundred percent. Turbulent times happen and things don't go the way you plan, which I'm yeah. sure which I can only why? speak as another actor, fellow actor. There's so many times when we have those upsets, and then you have to be like, "Why?" Yeah. And then ten years later, you're like, "This is why." But that's how I feel about Bishop. Which is funny that you, yes, it's coming full circle, and I do see what you're saying, and that you brought that up, and I do agree that she has to go through it, and she wasn't fully ready. She wasn't ready when she got the job. Sullivan gave it to her because he didn't want to give it to. Andy because he had a relationship with her mm. and so he gave it to Bishop and Bishop wasn't ready so I do agree with you 100% that Bishop wasn't ready for the job and needs to go through a lot we just have to have it out Maya and Natasha <laughs> oh, have to have oh, it out I really want to <laughs> because the actual reason why Maya got demoted and why she stayed demoted was in my opinion about Maya was for the wrong reasons so I would love to have that scene yeah, yeah, no, there, and that is where the drama is. That's uh -huh. where that ambiguity is. That's where, you know, people are fallible and make mistakes. Um, and those question marks are why we're even having this question and, and why we're examining the human condition and trying to be better people. But we're all know? just doing our best. I mean, That's isn't exactly that the right. truth? <laughs> Sometimes it's all, we're all just trying our best. Okay, any other questions? Any Maddie, other thoughts? Anything you're seeing? Because Maddie's been keeping an eye on it this whole time. Oh. Oh. Anything that was... Let's have oh, it. you're looking at that too. Yeah, <laughs> she's, I don't been, she's been keeping track. That's why I said Maddie's the one that's gonna keep be on top of the comments. I don't understand technology at all. It's so hard to follow the comments and watch and watch and talk. So, um, well, everyone wants to hear your thoughts on the promo from both of you. Just to how have you, you seen the new promo? Yeah, I have. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, it broke my heart for you. So yeah, and so, oh, and you know, I feel like you guys really got into this, but just a little bit more based off of what's in the promo and what everyone can expect and how the conversation we saw between Ross and Maya tonight is going to affect the trajectory of the rest of the season. Just a reminder, what happened in the episode, do you remember what happened in episode six, the winter finale with your character? No. Neither do I. That's why I want to make sure before we speak. I'm trying, we're not Am I anything. in the winter finale? I don't even know. Um, I it's the it's it's the 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 crossover with Grays and Ellen and the house. It's are you not in that episode? I don't know. I really, really am in seven because I lost my so voice. So there you go. So the next episode. So what the, can you say? The, about yeah, the now? the episode that's coming up <clears throat> was is important. It's important. There's a story that's not even touched on in the promo that is just. Um, I can't believe how timely it is, and I can't believe how. Um, <gasps> oh my god! Yeah, it's so good. I literally for a second was like, "What are you talking about?" The next episode where that I we're lose my, back, I lost Merle lost her voice because it's it was so seven, major. Directed by Peter Page, written by Xavier, I believe. Yes, that's right. So good. Your oh, episode six is Girls Camp. Girls Camp. Yeah, Thank you. you. So you Thank had time you. to do it in six. Thank you guys. So you had a ton to do in six. I loved your stuff in six because I was with Vic. Yeah, yeah. I, I love this. I was like, I wasn't in that episode. But seven, two, what's to come? Seven and on. I'm, I know what's happening after seven, two, but seven is such a phenomenal episode for all the women on the show, but specifically yeah. you, you, uh, Natasha, Vic, and Andy. Yeah, That yeah. stuff that you guys did. It, I mean, it really was. Great. Even on the day we were like, oh my gosh. Um. Yeah, it's heart wrenching, emotional, and done beautifully. And and the episode after that, no, we talked about it. We talked about the the. What do we do? What? 
feel like we're in eighth grade. I still don't know what you said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, the what? The what? Never mind. Wait, look at me. But you liked it. Time. Look at me. Oh! Haha! <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Except I hope they didn't see it in the reflection. No, no, no. They, okay. would, they wouldn't. Like, I could barely make it out. I was like, ah, yeah. Um, I mean, we were totally just in seventh grade. That is also... You have such great stuff to do the rest of the season. Natasha's arc for the rest of season six, I almost said season seven, is fantastic. I you appreciate that. And what you have coming up, the episodes that we know we're about to shoot too. Oh my gosh, yes, yes. So good. And and I just, I don't know, everything in its timing. I feel like I'm finally, you know, getting some, getting my feet under me about who she is. So I feel like I, I uh, have something, I, I have a better understanding about. Shut up, Merle. No, I get what you're saying, though. I get that as an actor, like, we think we understand a character or the surface level of a character or the, what, as far as deep as we can go and as the character evolves with what the writers write and what you do with the character, with the actors you're acting with, you get a deeper understanding of who your character is. At but, least I feel that way. Because I thought I my one person and she has very drastically changed. Mm, that's interesting. Seasons. I mean, it's been six seasons. I mean, sh I've seen more and more layers to her. I hate the metaphor of like the onion, but like it's you know, a good metaphor. It is a good metaphor, especially if it's a blooming fried one. <laughs> Very delicious. I feel like that was that was Nebraska coming out of me because totally the, what are they actually called? Blossoms. Yeah, New York or Chicago pizza? No question, Chicago. What? And let I'm me tell New York. you something. I'm a New York pizza. I no, like no, no. I don't like deep dish. I because I I, I actually slung deep dish. Deep dish pizza in Chicago when I was in college. Like you could you could eat a big. Yeah, look, here's the technique. No way, too much. So you know a Chicago pie, you it's like a thick one like this, right? So you got to scoop it. It's got all the cheese coming off of it. You get the plate right here, okay? You scoop it with the thing. Scoop it right here. Put it on the plate right here, and then you take the same spatula and you say what like that across around the plate, around the plate. Give me oh. a. Okay. Okay. All the cheese. Oh, yeah. the cheese. So here's my. Oh, oh, okay. Put it on here. I'm confused. Cheese, cheese, cheese. Got here it, you go. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. That's how you eat a deep dish, and then you just go in knife and fork. Like I agree, it's delicious, but I could never even. I could barely get through one slice of a deep dish pizza. Like, and I like the thin slice Napolitano, is that how you say Thank it? you, Adrienne. Thank you. Style pizza. <laughs> Everyone's got, listen, I'm also like, I'm creative. Oh, I like, no, no, listen. I like pineapple and listen. Bacon, bacon pizza, so I am already. You, you said the right thing. Sense. You said the right thing. I fell in love in Napoli. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. A, like, a pizza from, but they said New York. They said New York or Chicago, and if I were to pick between those. Even though I am New York, I get through, what you're saying. But a Nepal. pizza, a pizza from Naples. Yeah, they have the official board of pizza there. They do. Yeah, that they says like, everything. Like that yeah, pizza that's pizza. thin and like a little, I gooey is probably not the right word. Delicious.com. That's that's what that's a little off. Okay, so we're but thin crust for the win. I I I'm but not mad like, at the old school like '80s Domino's. Like old school dominoes, not old school, I don't know what they're doing school, now. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I'm funny, thank you. She is. I like when people get to actually get to see and meet like you as a person versus the character you play. Oh we're my gosh, so different. There's some similarities, obviously, but like specifically you because you play so tough. Well, my resting face is a B face. Like if I, if I'm, I like the way you like went around that to not say the word. Yeah, but I mean, this is ABC, so like in Disney. And I am a Disney girl. Like, I, they do Disney concerts and all of that kind Wait, of stuff. Wait, what do you mean you did Disney concerts? Are you what kidding me? I played two Disney princesses on Broadway, and I, I, who? I did. Who? I, well, listen, and then I do the concerts all over the world for Disney. What? I did it at Royal Albert Hall in London, I did it at Boston Pops, I've done it on. All the Disney cruises. I do. I do Disney shows everywhere. I did it at D twenty three. I have learned so much about you. Listen, Marla, go on. Else. We're talking Disney. Go on Disney Plus and see and watch Disney Broadway hits live at Royal Albert Hall on Disney and Plus right now. How many do you have? How many are you in? It's a whole concert at Royal what? Albert Hall. Are you kidding me? That's listen. 
I'm much more comfortable on a stage than I am in front of a camera. I'm so glad I did know all this about you. I was already intimidated and nervous to work with you and be around what you. What are you talking because about? Because you're very, you come, I know you're like. Yeah, you're I have working. resting bee face. I do. Because when I'm thinking, I'm like, I look Confidence. Mad. I don't think you I have a resting bee face. I think you, you come in with confidence, even though you may not think you have it when behind whatever's going on in your head. You come in with confidence. You know what you're doing. You have an amazing work ethic and it's intimidating. So I'm glad I didn't know all this because God forbid if I knew all of this on top of the fact that I was already intimidated, I would have been like, I have to do a scene with her, okay? You gotta be kidding me. She is, she is no, no. Teflon on set. She is like, it, she's just, she is, her, her, her work back. is, no, it's, it's true. I'm always just like, dang. Dang, she oh, does not fall you know. down. She doesn't. Like, period. Well, that's... that's <laughs> okay, now, now we're going way off. Let's take, like, three more questions, and then we got to... I got to get two minutes of growling. Yeah, Better and I have a... Though. At least I'm awake now. Thank you, Maddie, for that. Um, um, questions here, or Maddie, is there anything you saw that is... Station some... 19 musical. Hell yeah. That'll happen eventually. Paris really wanted that. And obviously, I know you can sing. I'm not going to put you on the spot and tell you to sing. But if you'd like to, you should sing something because you do it all the time on set. And I, I do sing I, all the and time. And I love it. But I know sometimes when you just look at people and say, sing, no one wants to be like a... Um, what would I, I what do you want me to puppet. sing? Mm-hmm. When you're broken on the ground, you will be found. When the sun comes shining in, you'll reach up and you'll rise again. Go ahead and look around. You will be found. 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 found. That's my offering. What's crazy is that's, I think, the first, like, performance you've given me because on set, it's, like, a lot of joking around with funny songs. Oh, yeah. And obviously, I'm like, I know you can sing and you hit the high notes, but that was, like, a beautiful performance. What are it each, was. What yeah. are each of your go-to karaoke songs? Um, I like Big Butts. Oh, and, <laughs> and Ice Ice Baby. <laughs> I don't know. What's yours? Come on. I don't out. know. The joke used to be tequila. Okay. Because that's all you say is... Tequila. Tequila. But I don't know. I mean, I don't I don't know. I haven't carried a queen in so long. You're not seeing like Wrecking Ball by Miley Cyrus or something? No. <laughs> That's normally what she does with that random stuff on set. I love it every time. I don't know what my song would be. I mean, I, I, I don't know. came to be and how did you get station 19 obviously was i got a call i just got a call so you didn't have to audition or anything mm-hmm. you just got the call mm-hmm. that's amazing. you know what i think this is what i think um i think i think it was krista's idea wow that's what i think i don't know for sure but i think thanks krista that just made me kind of sad. Cause, well, because Krista just, it's announced, it's just oh, been announced I know, that. I know. But look, we got Krista for three years and now she's moving on. She's, but she's like, which is really w- she elevates everybody. Like she's gonna, she left a whole bunch of people that she um, encouraged and promoted and, and let including them. Including me. Include, yeah, <laughs> including you. And, and let everybody have opportunity. She's an opportunity maker. And so now she's released to like, uh, fill up her tank, which yeah. I think is a great lesson to all of us. You can be, you know, like the the, qu- you know, the queen of Persia or whatever, but you still have to like fill up your tank, and you you still have and and uh, she's got a million other projects going on, so she is released to elevate people in many spaces now. And I think that having a leader like her doing that 
and and freed up to do that in multiple ways is is a gift yeah extremely talented thank you Christine. everybody wants you to sing though no that's not happening I know. <sighs> Because I would have to sing after you. Absolutely not. Love you guys. Can we? Can we do it? I'll teach you a duet. You want to teach you? No, duet? we're definitely no. doing a TikTok. That was. We'll a do very a TikTok at some point. Yeah. And just for yeah. Oh yeah. Don't I you see. remember? I got both her and Stefania to do a TikTok. Yeah. Did we it do didn't that take again? a. It didn't take a whole lot of. Did we do one with Barrett too? Or was it just me, you, and Stefania? I think you and Barrett did one. But I got yeah, I remember doing you, and, you and Stefani. And I was like, hey, you guys, should we? And you That's guys were like, looked, okay. Right? Yeah. You should do a dancing one, one singing one, and one monologue, like lip syncing one, where you're doing like a okay. scene. Maddie's really putting it out there that we're going to do three TikToks. I'm but, into it. But the one that we did, we I, think we did like, I think we we're did like running out of time. 10 takes on it. But we we posted the first one. Because it had to be timed out perfect. Yeah, but we we got it the first time, and then we were just like, because we're perfectionists, we but just kept doing it over and over again. But isn't that always how it happens? It happens with acting, too. You usually get it on the first take, and then you do 12 more takes, and you realize the first take was actually the most authentic. Yeah, like when I, when I shoulder-checked you. Exactly! Full circle conversation! What? With that. <laughs> so, listen. Um, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for this forum to, you know, share and talk about it. I, I'm, um, you know, used to engaging with with um, the the fans of, of shows. And I, I really appreciate you, you all's enthusiasm and, um, you know, all the positive energy that has come my way. I appreciate that. And Danielle, thank you for being, you know, so welcoming from day one on the set and for always like, you know, being so game and for, be, and for running lines with me all the time with my, thank you for running with, lines my, with, me. with my old head. Oh my Stop gosh. It. Um, and your Coke Zero. Oh yeah, I'm my Coke Zero. You know, I've got, got a Coke Zero addiction, y'all. It's it's, but you know what? One day I'm gonna give it up, and and then, then what? I know. I was gonna say you can't. I don't know. <laughs> well, love y'all. We've got um three weeks until the mid season premiere, yep. and I gotta say it's a doozy, yeah. and um there is some, like soul wrenching performances from you from, from the you whole, from, from everybody the, in the from cast. the whole cast i mean honestly the the talent in this cast i i've got to you know shout everybody out they're such a wonderful group they're hilarious they're talented and they're just really good humans we work with some good humans and um i hope that you can feel that i i hope that um um you you can appreciate the, the level and skill that they're bringing you with a lot of love every week. And um, I hope you love it. Very excited. There'll be two more rewatch lives with other guests in the next two weeks. And mm -hmm. we'll be on the I'll air. be watching. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. It's been an absolute pleasure. Oh. <laughs> you so friend. Thanks for having me. Thank you for wanting to do it. Yeah. I know you had to take time out of your day too to make this happen. So thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And we'll see you. I'll see you next Thursday. Merle, get in the comments next Thursday. I'm going to keep it an eye oh, out. Yeah. I'll put my glasses on so I can make sure I see. Mm -hmm. Bye, everyone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.